can't teach height for the serve and you can't teach it on return and Zverev likes to return from a little bit deeper and the height that he has allows him to play this serve from her catch at a relatively comfortable place. and legs straight away and CB must be happy with that and Craig Norton would like to see this kind of point especially when it, his guy gets on top and wins it 24 shots and there is a look at that backhand to backhand exchange early in that one that Craig was talking about as well oh. these are two very fine two handed backhands patch You know, someone who doesn't have a very fine two-handed backhand, but his one-hander was sweet as John Fitzgerald. Fitzy, how are things looking and feeling down there courtside? Uh, I'm not usually referred to as sweet, Jim, but thank you. Salty? Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> Salty old dog. Yeah. No, I appreciate the, the, the thought. Those two-handers used to give us trouble when, in the old days when the youngsters came along. These two are, have beauties, don't they? Both great backers. Most players do these days. The, the two-handers are so competent in the modern game. This match, we looked at total time on court between the singles and the mixed doubles that both players have played. Zverev has played seven hours more than Herkacz. And then when you factor in, he had to do double duty last night, early into this morning, when Herkacz played just singles yesterday and finished in the afternoon, early afternoon. Pretty big discrepancy in recovery time. Which the Wimbledon hasn't necessarily factored into its algorithm. It's gone with the head-to-head -head being the most dominant thing. 5.45 a.m. Sasha said he finally got to sleep. And that was this morning, not long ago. There's confirmation of the head-to-head, -head. and the last meeting was one-way traffic in the Tour Finals. That was about three years back. Did he need a good night at first serve percentage? But he normally does. He leads the league basically amongst the big men as far as first serves in play. About 70% across the season in 2023. Just outstanding. He's looked very good around the net this week, and he continues to move forward with that conviction that you need to. He closes it down beautifully. Cuts right across the ball to generate the spin.
the longer Putting these rallies go between these two players, keep eyes on the core position. Zverev tends to start to drift further back with each shot if the rally extends to six, eight shots. Well, Hercoc, he's a baseline hugger. He'll try and stay right on top of that baseline and not give up ground. Yeah. That's going to be important for Zverev, I think, to try and keep the point short because the longer they go, the more physical they are, and then the more ground he has to cover because of what he naturally does movement-wise. Here's a look at that beautiful first serve motion, though, Petch. It's, it's pretty strong. Step up, back foot sliding up, and then he goes up like a volleyball player, ready to spike it, and spike it he does. Stages here. I, love you know, I think you can tell a little bit of a difference here between the ground stroke speed. You know, when you sit adjacent to the court, and I'm almost below the height of where they hit the ball here at my eye level, and it, it goes a bit faster from Zverev's end of the court to the other. 50 and it goes in reverse. in you can understand why Zverev when he goes up and has a look at the mark feels as though he's perhaps been hard done by it. and one of the reasons why up until this season we haven't had Hawkeye on clay marks can perhaps look a little deceptive for the players makes it tough for them to accept nothing wrong with that serve would you take Jim I would take Sasha's first serve and who'll be second serve how about you okay well I I love her catch a serve I really like it it's, it looks looks like it won't break down Test of half volleys from her catch as Jim was saying likes team to hug the baseline so far this evening in Sydney it's been all team Poland 2-1 her catch So Fitzy, you're asking about which first serve I would take. First serve, I would take Zverev. And, and not that I think it's better necessarily when it goes in. It just goes in with more frequency. But the second serve of, of Hercoc's is far superior. It's more reliable. It's got a nasty kick to it. It doesn't double fault very often. In fact, Hercoc has, I think, the most incredible numbers in serving from last year. For every ten, he hit 10 aces for every double fault he hit. A 10 to 1 ratio. If you hit three aces per double fault, you're upper echelon. Pretty awesome stuff. Just getting the end of the motion that is delivered on average 15 aces a match. That was a tour leading number for her catch last season. Have you talked to Craig Boynton 
at all, Jim, about Time. how he can follow that in occasionally or a little bit more because he is very Take skillful when he gets in close to the net. I have not talked to Craig about that. You're close to him. You want to wander over and make that suggestion? Yeah, he mightn't tell me right now. He's looking pretty serious. He might tell me uh, to go back to my seat, I think. As good a guy as he is. But I just think that that second serve against certain opponents, you know, you could use that and just come in uh, occasionally just to just to put some doubt in the yeah. returner's mind. I it, can tell you, Fitzy, that, that they've done such a great job together in making sure that he holds serve at such a high rate that the focus yeah. as far as improvement goes right now is this endeavor yeah. trying to break serve more often because that's something where he's not as good as Varev. Yeah. Fair enough. Zverev was number 21 on tour in last season in breaking serve. Hercoc was 76th. That's a big, big difference. Pets, do you have any uh, suspicion why Zverev is better at breaking serve? I would say that in general it goes back to his clay court record for Sasha compared to Hubie. Hubie's one of those rare breeds that actually breaks more times on a hard court than he does on a clay court, whereas Verev has a big differential when he gets onto the clay. Much higher break record than on hard. He's a much more sort of aggressive returner, isn't he, Hoopy? Which why it works well on hard courts. The ball skips through, rushes his opponent, doesn't get the same benefit on the clay courts. Sasha's all about quantity and quality, obviously, of return. Hagen tough. For Team Germany is Sasha Zverev because it has to be difficult for him out there right now. Physically, I've experienced having to go to sleep very early in the morning and then turn around and play the next night or later that night, and it's just very difficult. You feel disoriented. It's You, you have a form of jet lag, effectively. And it's just hard to get the wheels turning. So he's done well to, to hold serve the first couple times because from my experience, it, it does take some games to kind of get the engine going and get the adrenaline back into the body. And maybe then he'll start to feel normal. Tariff shot coming up here from her catch where he is. Just got to try and feather it over the net. Tough to judge. willing to invest in some physical points early on. That's wise. And Zverev eventually decided to go for broke on that four, and he'd had enough.
He can still be deadly on the perimeter, can Zverev. Long levers. And he has absolutely laced this from well behind the baseline. He looks a little bit more dangerous, Mark. You know, when, he, when he has a swing, he can generate a bit more power. He does a bit more damage with his ground strokes than Hubie. Not a lot, but a little. Serving from her catch up about eight kilometers an hour on his average for the United Being Cup this evening. And it's an out, allowed him to hang on to his serve the opening three times. 3 2. These two teams have been very busy in Sydney, but uh, some of the other teams have uh, been able to get out and about. We're going to head out to Manly, located in Sydney's north. And of course, uh, a beautiful part of the world. Millions of visitors come in every year. And it is a very quick hop from the Sydney CBD. Just jump on the Manly Ferry. It's about about 20 minutes just to uh, get yourself out there. And very popular, the Manly Wolf, Manly Corso for restaurants and shopping. But shopping doesn't seem to be your thing if you want to get out there. A bit more like surfing, I would suggest. As we are in just out west of Sydney, where we've been staying out in the legendary Ken Rosewell Arena. Eight-time major winner. A tribute to his phenomenal career. Ken Rose Arena has been host for a second year for this United Cup. A little bit of a change in the format, which has been a, a huge success. Last year there were five matches over a couple of sessions. This year just the one session deciding everything. And there is no doubt when you judge it through the popularity and all the kind of metrics you need to that it has been a very, very popular event in both Perth and here in Sydney. Another great crowd here in Ken Rosewall Arena. It's been uh, bursting with energy both inside and outside of the arena, out in the lawns. High energy, lots of people having fun, lots of kids out playing a little bit of uh, hot shots tennis, introducing themselves to this lifetime sport. First saw Zverev when he was about eight years old in Florida, training there. His older brother, Misha, who was a top professional, made the quarterfinals of the Australian Open not too many years ago. He was the older brother. This guy was the little one tagging along. He's going okay. That was pretty clear back then. His vector was going to be a little yeah. different to everybody else. He's not just his brothers. Here's his dad, Alexander Sr., who also fits it. You played, right? I did once. How'd you go? Uh, I lost. I, I, Why do you always ask the I result? I would recommend you say I came in second. <laughs> that sounds better. It was close. I also had my young son Patrick over in Adelaide one year when he was 12 years old and this young man was 11 at Memorial Drive in Adelaide and they were hitting balls together each week, uh, all week. It was, it was interesting to see him then. He was already gangly, tall, long limbs, competitive. Todd Woodbridge was uh, saying that he also would hang around the courts waiting for any opening to jump out there. If there were five minutes between practices, he would fill that vacuum. Passion on display early. Team. So the place that I first saw Zverev was the Saddlebrook Tennis Academy where a lot of players have trained. And that's in fact where Hercoc came when he came to America. And that's where he and Craig Boyton hooked up. 
Craig was coaching some American players, has coached American players for a long, old time, and Hoobie was there, needed someone to travel with him, and Craig said, I'll give him a tryout. They did it at Indian Wells, made the quarterfinals together, and they've not looked back. battle of being a player is to find the right coach and you know if you, if you find the wrong coach as a young person uh, you can learn a few bad habits and it can be a little bit detrimental but if you find the right person the right personality someone who can teach you a little bit about life as well I think it's quite a healthy thing and uh, certainly you need someone who knows technique and strategy Is he a tiny bit sluggish, Sverev, so far? Yes, I think so. You? I'm wondering. He might loosen up. Be awfully hard not to be, to be honest. <laughs> the reason I say that, suggest that fits as we see it. The scoreline go to three apiece is in the longer exchanges. He seems to be the one who is a little less patient and wants to finish things off. And he's normally extremely patient. Yep, exactly. He's pulling the trigger a bit earlier tonight than he has been. Making it the odd more error, I think. That's the one thing that he has in his lock as well, and not everyone does from returning to him with pace. If you watch Hubie out of his serve, he's a long way inside the baseline. Often, because his serve's that good, you can't get it back under his shoelaces. But if you can return close to the baseline, he's hustling with his footwork to pick up the plus one shot. Fastest of the night, 218. And that's out wide over the high part of the net. Normally, your fastest serves go right through the middle of the court over the low part of the net. Had a chance to uh, hold and sort of play a little bit, not hit the ball, but just play around with Hercotch's racket today after he warmed up. And it, it's. It's a little heavier than a lot of the players play with these days. About 360 grams if you include the string and the grip all, all told. And the grip is really big. And that's something you don't off, often see these days either because the players like to manipulate the ball more, get more spin on it. Rukach doesn't. He's a flat ball striker. So that makes sense. But what it is not is a racket that gives you a lot of power. It's a racket that makes you play the ball. And it probably explains why he's able to have such good feel because it very much is a racket where you can feel the ball. It's not exploding off of that racket at all. The serve certainly is. Fastest of the night at 220. 4-3, her catch. a little bit with Craig, didn't you, Jim? What, I did. What, what are his strengths? Uh, Craig's, I think, one of his biggest strengths is his demeanor. He's very cool, calm, and collected, very even-keeled in, in a profession where there's a lot of emotion from the player, and he's able to withstand that, and he's very adaptable. I think that's his, another one of his biggest strengths is he adapts himself to the player and makes, makes sure that the player is comfortable. It's not the player that has to change for him. 
and he has a wealth of knowledge because he's worked with so many different style players from power baseliners like me to big servers like John Isner. He's kind of worked with, with every style. Seen all kinds of different temperaments. Not just German tennis players, but uh, German cuisine here in Sydney. They're number one out there, fighting to try and give them a chance to win the United Cup. Taking on one of the most durable players. He may be one of the biggest servers, Ubi Hercat, but he's also one of the most durable. Last season, more than half of his matches went to a deciding set throughout the course of the season. 69 matches Hercatch played, 39 of them went to a final set. Early stage of this one, and it looks as though it is going to be another tight affair. He has bounced back from a, a very early morning, has Sasha Zverev extremely well. Good news on an energy front is that he is maintaining his first serve speed that he's had for the entire tournament at 202 k's. Interestingly, and maybe strategically, serving about 15 k's quicker on his second. Oh. Not allowing her catch the opportunity to potentially attack it. has been his average and as you can see there at 166 that's pretty much been what he's been on tonight to see Torben belts makes sense Jim doesn't it to serve quicker against somebody like her catch obviously there is an element of risk for Sasha that maybe a few more doubles come yeah, but hasn't hit one yet. Yep. He's had his second serve under control this tournament so far from the matches that I've been lucky enough to watch. And Sweeps it away. And levels things up in the opening set for a piece. That's the danger, isn't it? Of taking that backhand down the line. He doesn't have the high spin rate, her catch. He has to coax it there a little bit more than other players. Second serve having held pretty comfortably. Looks like he's ready to, to spend some energy and try and secure a break of serve in this game. Wouldn't be surprised to see him be willing to play really physical points here and push on. See if he can get a lead. Makes sense. And Hercotch has given him a little bit of an opening here with two missed first serves.
so much to savour in that point from both players. Lovely pivot from here for her catch to get that ball down low. Not easy with the way that he strikes the ball to get it as low as that. But once he had accomplished that goal, that was the icing on the cake. Very good team. Towards the end of the opening set, and you feel as though both players have just pulled the pen out of the grenade here, ready to go off this one. Oh. Interested to see how much energy Zverev is willing to spend now down 40 15 if he stays engaged or tries to play a quicker point. Yeah. John Fitzgerald's style volley. Puts Team Poland 5-4 up in the opening set. Team Poland leads five against the four. You had that volley, Fitzy. How would you like her catch your serve? I feel like I'd be working less with you, Mark. <laughs> uh, so that's just upside, upside, <laughs> and more upside. No, I, I'd miss it, mate. I'd miss it. No, no, look, that was I like that. And you know what? It was a second serve. It's actually a bit harder. I, I used to find harder on that first court to do that to do this. But on the second court, I reckon he could do it more. Not a lot, just a little bit. Of, and he's got the abilities. He's got the weapons on the volley to do it. He's a beautiful volley with feel. Rare for a big man like him. Another look at the 26 shot rally. There was some big hitting in there between these two. And it was just a little bit of a mini opening, as Jim said, for Sasha. It looked as though maybe he had taken control of the point. How big will that backhand be and prove to be for her catch? She was under pressure at Love 15. Sasha advancing. Petch, I think an indication of his anticipation. He was there before before the ball was for that backhand. He really read that well from Sasha. And if Svera is going to come in like that, he has to have her catch stretching. Not, you can't just hit it in the hitting zone. That's asking for trouble. and one for Team Poland throughout the United Cup. Just the one loss for her catch against Davidovic from Kina. Can pass down at the feet of Zverev this time was her gotcha and Sasha made him pay.
Team in red, red lining it. Good anticipation once he hits this backhand that it's coming cross court and he's quick to take it and intercept it. And it's the thank you very much Valley winner. Oh, a product of the approach shot and anticipation. Boom, you team. Can't, uh, can't touch that one unless you're anticipating the wide serve. That is big and precise from Sasha. So in terms of the number of aces that her catch has compared to Sasha as well, he's almost 50% less. Quite happy to back up his serve with his uh, ground stroke game. And he has done that very effectively over the opening 10 games here tonight. Neither player has been able to get to a break point when returning. It's all Going fairly smooth for the servers. Might be heading towards a tiebreaker. Oh! Love 15 last return game and lost that lengthy point when he was trying to get Love 30. See if he can do better here. And he has. Unforced error gives the first real opening for Zverev on her catch's serve. And that's the rhythm that her catch likes. You can see bottom left. He likes to hunt his forehand with that third shot. That time, I know, it was uh, a little shorter than normal. It was on his backhand. He hasn't had to hit many of them. Was that the difference? It's a great stretch from Zverev. He missed that by four meters. Gosh, could use a couple good first serves here to bail him out. There's one. 15, Got it. Got it. so tall and has such big wingspan. He doesn't have to guess as frequently as some of the other more standard sized players on tour. He had a good look at this one. He knows that was there for the taking. Instead, it's 30 all. Oh. But here's his chance now. 30 all, second serve. He's going deep to give himself time and try and work this point.
So she's going for Sophia, recognizing the significance of the moment. Absolute firecracker of a serve. Sash has done incredibly well to make that back in a play and at yes. least force her catch to make the forehand. But 220Ks out wide. What a luxury. One thing when you look at uh, players in the top 15, top 20 in the world, they all have tendencies on big points. And Herkacz's big tendency is he hits the, his serves at its hardest on break point. You would think he would make less. But he doesn't. He's clutch. He actually makes more oh. on break points down. It's pretty remarkable. Zverev has had lots of chances, lots of looks. He's played a good game and missed a couple of shots by nothing. Survives the break point, and everybody here in Sydney reveling in this team environment. Team Poland, 6-5. between two big servers that's had a lot for us to enjoy, savour, analyse. And the first major scare for one of these two in the 11th game. Couldn't have played the big points better. Her patch delivering a monster serve out wide and a forehand to follow. Zverev does get the benefit of the, the 90 second break after that exertion to reset himself and get ready for a, a hold of serve and a tie break if things go the right way for him. Undeniable courage with the way that her catch plays tennis. He sees a shot and he lines up for it and there is no hesitation. Time. what might have been and perhaps just feeling the inside out forehand rather than the break point where he had no opportunity it was just too clean from her catch well saved but he did have a good opportunity to potentially produce a second break point Zverev looking to shove this opening set into overtime
Quality volley behind a quality serve. Good technique. Racket in front. No, mu not much follow through. And a good catch also. Up in the stands. Nice hands. Oh, Looks like another clean kill in the service game for Zverev. Yet to face a break point. They'll be facing many break points here momentarily, it appears. Tiebreaker coming. clear is Zverev is fighting hard. What's also crystal clear is that he needs this first set more than Hercoc does because Zverev will be staring down the barrel of three sets to, to survive if he loses this one. Not sure we'll see him in the, in the mixed doubles court today should they get there. Max Marderer might be ready to go for them. Oh. He's been Germany's warrior. No doubt about it. He needs this set. Zverev's just got to be careful when he comes in. He can't come in and hit a half follow like that. He's, he doesn't have the feel that her catch has when he comes One, in. Zero. So it's dangerous. If, he, if, he, if the ball goes down onto the court and he has to hit a half volley here, that's just, it's not going to win. That'll win one in nine or ten. If you've got a guy stretching, showing some intent, isn't he, to move forward? One. Again, the height that he has allows him to take that ball on the rise very comfortably. 22 out of 23 first serve points, one tonight from Sasha. Two weeks haven't been that successful for either player in breakers. Her catch with a 52% success rate in tiebreakers. Sasha under that number at 47%. Seen a lot of forehands missed by her catch in key moments like these. Something a little extra there, her catch.
He Two found more. the turbo button to get his legs moving to the net, that's for sure. And then we've talked all tournament long about the soft hands of the big man, and here is another prime example of it. Thank you. Team Germany here, though, I, I would recommend exploring the forehand side of Team Poland and see if it holds up under duress. on down here and, and Jim you're so right Craig is the most down to earth quiet coach confident looking coach but just no no stress and he doesn't he doesn't pass that on to the player it's fantastic what he does you can't see the ulcer can you no <laughs> So much, Jim. I, I, I just don't think that's his best play. Uh, occasionally, yes, but not uh, three times in six points. It's certainly out of character for him to try and force his way in without an advantage and have to yeah. have to take on difficult volleys. Yeah. And Pat Rafter, he's not. No, nope, he has other strengths. Yep. Exactly. And perhaps it's the fatigue. Don't know. But in their prior head to heads, you would not have seen this type of move, Patch, in these moments. Yeah, and, he, and he's gone to the backhand every time. He has got an incredibly flat backhand. We know her catch, and just maybe he's been a little predictable with that. And her, who he knows it's coming, and he's managed to get it down very effectively. Hokach has just left the team zone after a rather lengthy stay in there with his towel and water. So Zverev has been waiting to serve now for about 30 seconds. This is like a set point here, this one. Almost. that is causing Zverev not just to miss, but also fraying at the edges. Well, credit to Igor Sviantek for putting Poland in pole position. Credit to Alex Dimonor for uh, keeping Zverev on court for three sets last night, too. All of that taking its toll on Zverev's shot making and decision making. Played a really good first set, but he's not played the steadiest of tiebreakers, and it's about to come to a, an end here. Hercotch serves for it at 6 2. and moving from Zverev off the return. He had to come from a long way behind his baseline. Six, three. And he's given himself a lifeline. That was a poor choice by Hercotch to serve in volley on a second serve there, even with the cushion lead. Zverev is fraying, as you said. They gave him an, an easy opportunity to get one break back. The backhand 
dangerous wide, and so do the ambitions for Zverev in the opening set. It is her catch for Team Poland that takes it on the tiebreaker, 7-6. Cup title. If I was reading the match notes correctly, guys, Team Poland has not won a Billie Jean King Cup slash Fed Cup or a Davis Cup, nor have they won the United Cup or any of the team competitions. This would be a first for them in tennis as a nation. Good response here from Zverev, and it's awfully nice to have the type of weaponry he has at the start of these points to uh, take a little bit of the, the stress out of it, the load, the workload out of it. Oh. Punch a couple big serves and head to the other side. Often, you know, when you've gone through one set that takes over an hour and you put everything you possibly can into it, you've got to be very careful not to start in second gear at the beginning of the second set. He's hit a double fault and loose ground stroke. He needs to finish this game, Sverev, so that he can settle down a little bit again. And he's still, still uh, simmering over what happened at the end of the first set. Hasn't quite settled in. Can he use that as fuel to get a break of serve? Neither player has done that. No one's gotten to a break point yet. And Hercotch is just slow rolling him, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, and I always give Zverev a lot of credit for this. He is the one player that just follows the rules. I mean, the fact that the rules aren't implemented in terms of walking around after one love is not her catch's problem. He can uh, do what he likes if the umpire doesn't want to call him out. But Sasha is the one that is always ready to go. start here from Sasha. That's what I was talking about, depth Long after the hurt catch first serve, that so you can catch him under his shoelaces. And having hit an iceberg at the end of that opening set, Zverev, it's very easy just to uh, drive yourself straight through the North Pole to finish the job, but he has picked himself up. And he's off. doing what he can. There is nothing you can do about that. Eighth ace for her catch.
Thirty off. Have to do a lot of racket work there to uh, finish off that shot with the one stroke. Very impressive. to anticipate really well this big guy he's halfway there before uh, Sasha finishes his shot he, he reads this pass beautifully he's done it on some ground strokes too where he, he's half a step towards the target before he just reads it nicely made that look easy One he was in a tussle with Angie Kerber. It was three all in the opening set. She had some break points she had to save, and then she just went on a run and did not lose another game to give Poland the 1 0 lead. She looks to be in the type of form that might lead to her first Australian Open title. Time will tell. It's looking more and more likely that it might lead to a United Cup title right here tonight. She's done her part so far, that's for sure. Still available for the mixed doubles if needed. Terrific one two from Zverev. Favorite forehand is cross court. And he shows you why. Absolutely laces this one with top spin. Good flat return is low and he thumps it.
Not easy to redirect from down there for somebody like her catch. And Zverev secures a 2-1 lead in the second set. that's going on at the moment. He's looking for solutions and can't find them. Is there another way? And just maybe at this stage, it is her catch that's having the better things. This is the way that Zverev has been returning, and there's not one way, just one way to play this game. You can see Sasha on the first serve return is a lot closer to the baseline. He's dropped back, letting the air come out of the ball for the second serve but it hasn't really enabled him to get into her catch's Time. second serve. This is her catch, as you can see. He does the more traditional move where he closes it down, tries to take the ball on the rise. You can see the uh, second yellow line of balls is a lot higher than the red one where he's returning that first serve. So he's the one that's trying to take time away. Sasha's trying to build pressure with the quantity of returns. Very little between these two and many different ways to try and be successful on a tennis court. Would you like to see him come in, Jim, or do you think he's doing the right thing by staying deep? Look, I think that when you're not having success, you've got to be willing to make adjustments and try different things and see if it, uh, if you can get a different result in the second serves right now. He's he's not damaging Herkosh. Herkosh is winning a very high percentage of those. So yeah, I think the information that you just showed us would indicate he should try something different. Come forward and attack the second serve. He's certainly tall enough to handle the kick serve bouncing up high. says to me that he, before the start of this match if they're both fresh on an even keel you, you'd think that his ground stroke game would be would be a little bit too heavy for her catch logic says that to me but by coming in a lot it means he, in his own mind he's not sure he's winning enough from back there either that or he is a bit sore and tired but I would have thought he wouldn't be afraid to stay back with Booby. Blunting the power with the block return, got himself involved. I'm still thinking he's a percentage point or two off, though, from the back of the court. I mean, you don't see him do that too often. Really whipped it.
years ago as Varev announced to the world something he'd known since he was three years old. He was stage one diabetic. And he'd been quietly injecting insulin for years and years and years as needed, but not on court. Doing it during bathroom breaks, kind of hiding it in a way. But has since announced it, wants to inspire other people that suffer from diabetes that they can do great things, be among the great athletes in the world, bit of an ambassador, if you will. Like we may not have a fuel gauge, but he has an insulin gauge that he monitors religiously. And not unusual these days to see him inject himself with insulin on a change of ends. Done a very nice job of managing his own emotions while containing her catch in his opening five games of the second set. Okay, come on, up. Very good. Up. Time that to perfection the jump, glide, hit. And talking about weight of shot off the ground as Fitzy was. There it was on the backhand side, opened the door up for that moment. San Francisco. It's not always about the velocity. The vision was very nice. does extremely well between the lines of a tennis score he competes he doesn't often dilute his success on a tennis score by beating himself no matter the stresses and strains Time. that he's been through there's a lot of narrative still swirling around about his second serve but he's only averaged two double faults a match in the last 52 weeks we perhaps can shelf that for a while and bookmark it and come back to it there are others out there that serve a lot more than he does He's been secure in that department. He's applied a little bit of pressure on the return. Can he find a way to shift this match to his advantage? Shouting, what else? It's all sort of stacked up on him. The build up to this match, everything that he's gone through the last few days to get Germany into this round, it's, it's taken its toll. He's, he's mentally a little bit cracked at the moment because oh. that shouldn't have bothered him that much. That happens in virtually every match. Something like that.
Oh, what a laser. Absolute flash down the line. Whether that was driven by anger or just by the opening, doesn't matter. It was as good as you can ever see a backhand. His fellow's patience gonna be given its reward. Is here, he's been striving for. Magic from Hercotch there. Zverev grinding, stretching, yeah. forcing Hercotch to hit shot after shot. And Hubi delivers with the soft hands again. Kept asking Hercotch to produce the receipts, didn't he? Hercotch had them. Game that her catch needed. Well, here comes certainly a dangerous game the for Zverev, given the physical and mental exertion he used to try and secure that break of serve. Now he has to defend his own. This would be a test of his will and concentration.
Third sealer. That's answering the bell in a big way from Zverev. Precise, purposeful, and pain free so far in this game. continues and with the finishing line of this second set coming into view just a burst of energy from the German 4-3 It's been great to see Angie Kerber back. There's been some very good moments from her, particularly in the opening set. There's also been some tough sets for her. Her loss to uh, Zachary and then maybe the second set just giving her pause for thought. She'll be moving on to Melbourne. Seen it not having to act so much uh, as an absorber of the stress that Sasha was feeling earlier in the set that time. That was a little bit more thoughtful and productive as a conversation time. between dad and son. Should be looking to replicate what Zverev has just delivered. Doesn't want another stressful service game like he just had. <laughs> you may not get that luxury. I love this team. Zverev continues to excel at making first serves, serving almost 80% first serves in play for the match. Gotch far below that, down at 60%. Giving Sasha chances to just peer into these service games a bit more. There was nowhere else Perkach could have possibly gotten an advantage on with that pass, given the quality of the approach. That was spectacular touch. Take a look at this. And he hits this ball behind him, Petch. Phenomenal. Yeah, and as a natural two-hander to come up with a one-handed shot like that in that moment. 15 all, not love 30 due to that. Amazing. And then that snuffs out. 30, 15. A little bit of hope at 30-15 with that ace catching the outside edge of the line, it appears.
just backing up what Jim said rather than start when there is a bit of a threat at times for her catch. You just find something a little bit more bigger, faster on the serve. 219. He has actually dropped off about eight kilometers an hour on his first serve in this second set. Dropped six on the second as well. Yeah, 219 followed by 211 can rescue a lot of difficult He just dropped trip. the hammer. That's what he did. These guys are two of the best first serves in men's tennis. Who else is in the conversation? Fitzy, Petch? Give me a couple names to look at. Not all at once. I'm still admiring this first serve. Second back. I like Taylor Fritz's first serve. Sits a pass as an excellent first serve. Berrettini's any good? Yeah, he's just been away for a while. Mm -hmm. Out of sight, out of mind. I'll throw Novak Djokovic's in these, yeah. there these days. Be rude not to. Yeah. Daniel Medvedev. I like the way her catch hits his second serve. Oh, yeah. I think I think he could base more of his game around that. You know, he, there's a lot of guys that just go for the line, bang on the first serve all the time. You know, what I like, else I like a, yeah, it is, is out of sight, out of mind. A pretty good server, isn't it? Curious. Yeah. Not going to see him on the court, sadly, here in the Aussie summer, but we're seeing two of the best serves currently in men's tennis, and no one's broken yet. 5-4 is Vera. Team zone, Germany right now. Pretty calm in Team Poland's zone as well. Kaj has to come out and serve to stay in the set, but Inga Świątek has put them in a great position. They lead 1-0 in matches here. One more needed. Look at both of the players in slow motion. Sverev's forehand, lovely contact point out in front. Time. 
going to be interesting to see what is the uh, great separator in this second set. There was uh, a couple of perhaps ill-advised forays into the net for Zverev in the opening set breaker that ended up being the differential. But the pressure just ratcheting up for Hercac as he tries to put Poland over the finishing line and claim the United Cup. It's not far away, potentially. Oh. That was an interesting little bit of subtle skill. It's almost sorcery, Fitzy. Well, he saw him coming in, and uh, interesting, yeah, if, he, if he'd come over that forehand like a regular topspin forehand, he, he would have been a lot easier to read there. Nice. Well, we talked about a couple of ill-advised, perhaps, forays into the net, but this is just excellent persona five from her catch. And that's about the third time on that double-hander he has come up with something a little special. And lurking just around the corner after a point like that as well is one of those. How often does he hit an ace on the third point of a game? <laughs> He might be under the pump, but at 15 all, he just serves an ace to get ahead. Here, though, Sparrow, his body language is very forthright. Spot catches a line from Hercotch and he forces his way forward, but that was not good direction on that approach. And Sparrow's two hander is too good to let him get away with that. Big moment here. Sparrow within two points of sending this into a deciding set. If he can string them together. It's a bit soul crushing for a returner to work that hard to get to 15 all and then 30 all, and then the serve just erases the strain for Hercotch again and again. Look at that. Once again, it's the first serve that delivers the hurt. How much pain can Sverev take? Seen some emotion from Zverev today at times. Saw some at the end of that point from Hercotch. Angry that he's flailed another forehand long as he tries to get anything going 
to put some pressure on Sasha's serve. Yet to get to break point is her catch. First sign of genuine wear and tear, perhaps, for the German who was cramping at the back end of the epic mixed doubles last night against Australia. Thank you. stumbled their pitch after the serve. Yeah, there was uh, pain etched on his face at the end of the run for the drop shot. There'll be another wind there, a second, third wind. Sore though, he would certainly look sore this game. just feeling a little undertow for the first time but boy oh boy his passion and desire is unconditional and it overrides it 6-5 team germany second set Again, the difference for Sasha on the return when her catch is patrolling inside the baseline is how quickly he's got to get out of his serve position, a hustle to get over there for that return. And that was magnificent. A roar of self-approval for the German. has gone, but Zverev's hopes have not diminished, like the sunlight here in Sydney. Time! The cheers for both teams cascading down the stadium sides, and the echo is felt by everyone. And will that last forehand reverberate around the stadium and also for be the infusion of inspiration, Jim? that Sasha needs, that's been impressive. It's been so impressive to see him just will himself into this position, clearly not feeling his very best, but fighting 
as he always does, leading 6 5 in the second. Okay. Like we're heading to another set ending tiebreaker. Kutch opens up with his 15th ace of the match. And team Poland went coast to coast when they traveled from Perth to Sydney, and he had to go coast to coast in that point a few different Fifty times. Good aggressive ground stroking from the German. Nason at 15 all. Unforced error for, for Zverev. He's, been, he's played excellent this set. 15 clean winners against only five unforced, but that that's a painful one. Long time for it. Could have had 15-30. Different script this time. Comes in on that two-hander. Often has had to play it off his shoelaces. This one was at a comfortable height. Yeah, it makes a world of difference if you get that ball low to his ankles. Big difference. If it's up high there, he's okay. Played the pressure points better, her catch, because he's had to. He's been under pressure more often. He hasn't carved out a break point in this match yet. 30-14. This, however, is Vera's fourth, and it is a set point. Thank you. Leo Derini, please. Thank you. Please. Just second serve, and Zverev took dead aim down the line. There was available space. He just couldn't land it. That was a gutsy serve. Capital G. Might as well use your best shot. And that's how far Zverev was from sitting down a set even. He's been breathing harder himself this game, movie, and why, why wouldn't he be? He's feeling the pressure this game.
Thank you. Let's listen. First break point he faced in the opening set. He hit a let going for the T serve. And then when he came for the next first serve to follow, he went big wide and got the job done. Let's see where he goes here. A slight wink. That's all he gave him. Yes. He's got high standards, Craig. How was that for a clutch point? Zverev asked all the right questions. He forced Hercotch to keep coming up with shots, and he did. Sensational from Sasha. Box office entertainment. Had to be a winner. He was out of position. He wasn't getting back from there. Full team on their feet. His mixed doubles partner from last night, Laura Sigmund, she's standing just at the entrance to the door, right next to her dad. Yeah. And she watches that third set point go missing. 215K on the ace. What a game this has turned into. There's Laura. Hoping to get a chance to play a deciding mixed doubles match. They saved match points last night. There's Iga. Watching from inside. Barely watching. <laughs> it's hard in your throat stuff. Oh my goodness, that didn't make it over the net by much. Her catch living on the edge. Killed it stone cold. Competition, the United Cup has thrown up some memorable moments, some of the best, I think, even when we look back at the end of the year. Lara Sigmund's match point save lob in the mixed doubles against Team Australia last night was something else, as was that hold of serve from her catch. Thank you.
seeing from her clocks here. We'll talk about lifting at the right moment. Yeah, Jim, I, he's so good at getting the ball low, and if you get One, a low this session, he can't penetrate with a volley as well. Anything above the net he can put away, but when it's low here, it drops low, he can't do enough with it. Still wasn't an easy forehand to thread down the line. That is right through the eye of the needle. And Sverev's long levers and wingspan needed to be good, and it was better than that. Replay the first set breaker. Two, yeah. Zero. Team color. Yeah, you got to work out what was good in the original, haven't you, to make a good sequel, and that's what her catch has done in the opening couple of points. Please. In the eye of the storm, he has threaded the needle once again. Oh. Sasha needs to get in the mix early. to the emotional abyss at the start of this second set. He's done incredibly well to purge that anger and focus and play as well as he has all the way through this second. Still all to play for. Wasn't his best serve. Didn't hit a spot. Wasn't particularly fast for a standard, but Zverev nearly whiffed it. So they'll switch sides level at three. That was strange, wasn't it? Almost like his arm didn't move fast enough. You're winning this set's one thing, Jim, and pitch, but gee, if he wins this, he's got to win another. Well, there'll be some achievement if he can win this. But he has been desire personified. side of the net. Her catch's performance has had high artistic merit. Who is going to prevail in this second set breaker?
He missed it. Three. What an opportunity lost there. Opted to let it bounce, which is wise. We've seen lots of players struggle with the, the lattice work above Ken Rosewall Arena here. It's intricate. Easy to lose the ball. Gave himself time, but just overplayed it. Still on serve, but boy, that feels like Thank a you, big, the other big really loss for Team Germany. Thank you. Diluted entertainment for these fans. Five, three. And no generosity on the Team other side of the net. Doesn't repay the favour he just received. Clinical. Closing in on the win. but it's Hurkacz in command now. Two serves to close it out if he can get it done. Thank you. Produced beautifully and it exports misery for Zverev. Six four. It's a shot Team that Potter. failed him miserably in tie breaks at this competition and the Australian Open just one year ago, but it's put him on the brink. It's held up beautifully in the cauldron of pressure. Thank you. of the United Cup. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. But it is still United Cup point. Saved match points last night 
in the mixed doubles. He's very a part of that team with Laura Siegemann against the Australians and came out on the other side a winner. Saves two championship points in the first one as dramatic as it gets. Perkoc was a little conservative with the approach, didn't hit his spot, but this was a brutally difficult pass with very little chance of success. Amazing. More out than in. But it is the shot that keeps Team Germany in with a chance. has been taking as they've changed ends. Let him feel it and hear it. That's six all. from Zverev and if he could grab this point he still may be victorious Just come off at Kevin as well. He's earned his reward for everything that he invested in that second set. And to a third we go. What have we got in store in this third set? Fifteen left. It's such a world of difference starting a set after coming through that amazing, immense amount of pressure that both players just faced. Players are more relaxed. There are fewer fans in the stands because they've stepped out to grab a drink, maybe a bite of food, and hit their reset button. But her catch would love to have been able to replicate what he feels in his body right now in that tie break. Oh! But the tension was unmistakable. Three consecutive unforced errors after the remarkable pass from Zverev. Oh! But this is where Craig Boynton, Hoopy's coach, is going to have to earn his money. He's going to have to remind Hoopy that he still has the physical advantage here, even if psychologically there's a little bit of scar tissue from what just happened. Yeah, 
back in the groove on serve. Best game and I think he has to keep reminding himself, and I'm sure Craig is reminding him, he, he will be the fresher. He'll be the fresher of the two athletes. If he can just keep his nose in front by serving first, his opportunity will come for the catch. And this man just has to keep hanging in there physically. One heck of an effort to still be here. And I think he's just guarding against cramping here because Zverev uh, is uh, already taken on water, not something you often see him doing at one love in a set. How's the humidity down there, Fitzy? It's not bad at all, actually. It, Sydney is a little more humid generally than Melbourne, but it doesn't feel too humid at all tonight. Certainly not too warm. A couple oh. different ways that an athlete can, can cramp up. One is from just flat fatigue. Another way is from nerves. But the most damaging one is from dehydration. And that's good news. It's not too humid out there for Sasha. Deep in love. Hubie's still showing some anguish about what's just transpired. He's frowning, still thinking about the previous tiebreaker. He's got to get that out of his head. Well, as Jim said, this would be a, a pretty big piece of slice of history for Team Poland if they were to win it. It'd be a huge moment for them, and he is uh, now perhaps on the edge of heartbreak. He was moments ago on the edge of history, claiming it for them. He's got to manage that throughout the course of this final set. Oh. not just Ruby, it's also Iga Świątek who has to reconsider things. She thought she was going to be lifting a trophy right about now. Instead, she might be getting ready to play a mixed doubles match if her coach can't find his way to the winner's circle here. So uh, everyone needs to ponder. Laura Sigmund in Germany, Max Martyr, who might step in and play doubles instead of Zverev. Can't imagine Zverev would have the energy to come back for a mixed doubles match after this and going to sleep at 5 a.m. this morning. Hard to hard to see that, but only he knows. First things first, he has to win this set, Fitz. These two have burnt a lot of rubber. Oh. These new balls are flying a little bit. They, they affected Hoobie on the first three points. Yes. Jimmy, I, I would have thought that he would have to play mixed doubles, wouldn't he, for them to have a chance? That, maybe not, but I. He said the other day, if, if it's on the line, he's playing. I guess his body will let us know.
See, right now he should be, Herbie should be looking at him. He's having a look, don't worry. Took him a while. <laughs> He's not going anywhere fast, Fitzy. <laughs> he may not get up from that position. This is where the serve clock is going to come in awfully handy for Zverev. He can see that it's just started. There's 25 seconds. Actually, it hasn't yeah, even started. It's just restarted it yeah. as he walked through the baseline. So he's, he can work this clock and grab some very valuable time, rest up, try and deliver one serve, and if he's too tired to try and break serve, he can let that game go. Energy management's going to be key for him. Serve clock down to two, perfectly done. And now he can take another 20 seconds if he needs to. No serve clock between a first and second serve. seconds there. The serve clock doesn't start until the chair umpire calls score and after lengthy points the chair umpires wait for the crowd noise to dissipate Come on. and they typically if a player is at the net they wait for them to get to the baseline to start the clock. Amazing to me. This is a physical game. That's part of the deal. How is that possible? It's a suggestion clock not a shot clock. I got a little empathy for Zverev having gone to sleep at what time did you say? Five, was it 5.45 a.m. this yeah. morning? Having finished his mixed doubles match last night, I think a little leniency actually mm. in spite of, in, in view of all those facts is maybe warranted. And we'll have to agree to disagree on that one. Fair, fair, uh, fair Dick, I'm glad I'm not your child. Oh. 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 Interesting rhythm of this final set, Jim, because obviously he's going to have to serve and then he's going to be returning. He's not going to get that lengthy kind of rest at the changeover. Um, he's going to get that luxury before he serves. Be interesting to see how much effort he puts in here again. Oh. Based on what we're seeing, he shouldn't put any effort into this game. He should just miss this return and move along. His, Zverev's job right now is to just hang on for dear life until he gets that next burst of energy. Is it inevitable he gets that? It's likely. Yeah. catch uncorks his 19th ace of the match. 2-1, final set. Kaleidoscope of shot making, and there is a kaleidoscope of color at uh, Vivid Sydney. It began in 2009, a three week festival. Tell you what, there's uh, cities that you like to go for three weeks, and there's others that you wouldn't. You definitely want to come to Sydney. Sydney Harbour, absolutely spectacular when it's lit up and the surrounding areas. A couple of million people attended Vivid Sydney uh, every year, and the 2024 edition is set to play, take place in. About five months at the end of May, the 24th of May to the 15th of June, if you want to come and sample a little bit of vivid Sydney. Germany still somehow in this. One thing that has been uh, crystal clear tonight, Jim, is that Sasha Zverev does not want to go down as a footnote in Dominic Team's autobiography. He doesn't want to be that be the thing that he's remembered for. Two sets to love up in the final of the US Open back Time. in 2020. Team, the first man in the Open era at the US Open to come from two sets to love down in a US Open final. First final to be decided in that fifth set tiebreak, and of course Zverev serving for it at 5-3. He's desperate for a maiden major, as is this man. 
two top ten players right here. Locking horns. Not much between them right now. Prakash has been a semifinalist at Wimbledon. The last man to beat Roger Federer in a singles match. Beat Federer in the quarterfinals, and that one is Federer's knee finally gave way, and Hercotch put him away. And can he put Zverev away is the question of this evening. What kind of energy levels does Sasha have to hold serve here? I don't know what Zverev's schedule next week is, but it most likely is going to involve two days off to recover from his exertion here at the United Cup. He's going to need some time to recover from this. Understandably, Team Poland's captain Thomas Witgrowski encouraging Hubi to keep playing those types of points. Of course, he'd love to. A lot of that depends on whether Zverev makes a first serve or not. may well decide who finishes first. An animated example of that. Two less Cubans and that would have been in. One of the most interesting stats for Sasha's career when I watch him play because I think his endurance levels, Jim, are phenomenal. I kind of feel as though best of five should be a, a territory and a habitat that he excels in. But when you look at his record against top five players, in best of three matches, matches that could go to a third set, they don't all go to a third set, but in matches that could go to a third set against top five players, oh. he's won 24 and he's lost 27. It's a pretty respectable number by anyone's metric. And they continue to entertain. And they continue to excel. And this man continues to surprise us. He does, and he's, he's pushing her catch here mentally because 
Hubie's frustrated. I mean, he played a perfect shot there, and that was a volley that could have... You never know what could come off uh, Sverev's racket there, but he made a beauty just to get out of trouble. He's, he is struggling physically, but he's continuing to push. Hubie needs to keep his head here. Oh! Frustrating, frustration starting to show a bit on him. This is really dangerous now. And the fortune changing as well. And just as Hubie walks over to his towel and circle back to that full oh, Against top five players for Sasha in matches that could go to a best of five. They haven't all gone to a best of five. He's 0 for 11. It's kind of wild. Surprising. You would have thought the relentless nature of his serving, his ability to extend rallies. would make it more problematic in those moments. Her catch needing to dig deep. Just a touch of deceleration yes. on that two-hander that time from her catch. Nerves swirling around on both sides of the net. The player who has broken serve yet. Zverev's had plenty of opportunity, not able to get over the line yet, but now is another one of those times to spend whatever precious energy he has to try and generate that break. These chances are so fleeting. And the energy uh, is depleting. So how do you spend it wisely? Break. Her catch hangs on midway through the final set. 3 2, Team Poland. These are such big matches you feel for her catch in terms of his own character as well. When things are going his way, and he's playing lights out tennis. He is uh, an absolute handful, but at times there's been a little brittleness about his tennis in some of the big moments. Some of that can be attributed to his style. It is quite high risk with the flatter shots. Doesn't have that margin built into it, so, like Rafa. And one of the reasons as well that Craig Boynton has accepted the fact that Hubie is going to have a lot of deciding set matches, a lot of fluctuations.
just interesting there, Craig, chatting to Hubi. I mean, I'm interested to know what sort of tactics they're contemplating because it's been fairly um, relentless in terms of the style from both sides of the net. Yeah, I mean, I think if you were to kind of look at one area where he could maybe, he's making some inroads now, it's it's on Sasha's Five. second serve. I mean, with the first serve of Zverev, you basically have to pick your spots and kind of lean to one corner or the other and hope you, you get a couple right in a single game and maybe land some quick blows and get ahead in, in the count. He still hasn't gotten to break point, so it's worth taking some chances when, when the first serve is coming, guessing and looking for it. All he needs is one break, the way he's been serving and hanging in there, you would think. I mean, who knows? All he needed was a couple of good serves and the tiebreaker to finish this thing off, too, so there could be a lot of twists and turns, but now would be a good time for Team Poland to take some chances when returning, in my view. What they're doing has not worked thus far. Yeah, this is a poor game, isn't it? I, I, I wanted to say before the game started, he's, he's also got to show some positive body language here because there's been too much negative body language, I think, since he lost that second set. And and that that gives the opponent who's struggling physically just a little bit of hope. Good as shit. You've got to, okay, try and get up in the game, but, but even so, positive body language. Th show the other guy you're still fit and strong and want this thing. and had before her catch went out there. Bit of a zookeeper's bucket of a return game there from her catch. Is that similar to uh, dog's breakfast? <laughs> it was a bit of a mess. He's going to need to recover his poise, and he's got the help, of course, of his first serve. Zverev seemed to have. Narrowed his vision down there and absolutely arrowed one in behind her catch. He was drifting to his backhand side.
one of the most astonishing points of the match. Depth control from Zverev, and then he hits the line with the next one cross court. There's a lot of anxiety on Hubi's face here too. He, he's worried now. He feels like he's got something to lose here. Zverev might be trying to make his move. Crow barring the door open here, the German. Well, the benefit for Sasha of, of Hubi really handing him the hold of serve a game prior is that he didn't have to spend a lot of energy or stress to, to get it done. So he can go after this game if he can get into the rally. Which continues to be problematic. He's not quite, uh, her catch, he's not quite playing to the level he was, is he? It doesn't seem that to me here. He's, he's dropped off a fraction, it's very dangerous. And to Sparrow's credit, boy, is he hanging in. Her catcher's racket is gone. And if he loses and the next it, point, potentially the chance as well. A stroke of sheer genius from Zverev. He has flushed that out of the middle of the racket. And hope, that's a dangerous oh, toss oh, towards very, a ball Very, very dangerous, that, Jim. That's a, that's a defaultable situation. If you hit a ball kid with a racket, you are done and dusted. Crazy. Got to be careful with that one. And he's got to be careful with this point. Astonishing scenes here in Sydney. Zverev, for the first time, moves ahead with the break in the final set, 4-3. He looks more composed. He looks more together, Jim. He is. He, he survived that second set tiebreaker and came out with a new lease on life. Not new energy. He, he's been gassed in this set, and he's had to manage his, his emotions and energy. And, but Hercotch has not been able to handle the, the emotions. This uh, really just a reflection of the match points that came and went in the second set that had just been bubbling up inside of Hercotch. The frustration of not being able to close out what would have been a magnificent moment for him and for his nation. Craig trying to find a solution. Trying to calm down Hubi. He knows his temperament so well as uh, Zverev is uh, putting the energy in that system and Jim you know better than anyone else courage isn't the absence of fear it's the ability to act in spite of it and that is something we've seen from Zverev in the past didn't John Wayne say that <laughs> yeah I think he I did believe, I believe that's a quote from uh, John Wayne and it's absolutely a fact and Zverev there's a lot to admire about his effort here tonight it been very easy for him to accept defeat given the effort he had to do 
early into the morning just to get Team Germany here alongside Laura Siegemund. Having lost his singles to Alex Dimino, he came right back out against Team Australia, survived match points in that mixed doubles to give them a chance today. And he needs to win this match to keep that chance alive. And he is in position to do so now with the break in hand. Mysterious bit of extra energy he, he gets now. This is this would be like his third wind. Once you get up a break, you start believing. A bit of adrenaline. You feel a little better. Short sprint home from here for Zverev. To me, Jim, Hubie's played a little bit like he's got something to lose in this third set and in the tiebreaker. He, he didn't play to win enough, I don't think. It's easy, easier said than done, isn't it? Because they're the tough moments you have to face. But this third set, he hasn't been as good, I don't think. Zverev, it seems, will not be denied. are seemingly aligning for Germany's biggest star. Psychology and sport, huh? Yeah. You know, when now he feels like he's got less to lose, he, and he, he's going for the lines.
This is the final time they change ends in an extraordinary night in Sydney. Two hours and 51 minutes. Zverev will serve for the win. to uh, just take a little bit of a, a breath. We're going to go over to Taronga Zoo, located on the northern banks of Sydney Harbour. Indigenous word for beauty, full water view, and there is uh, no doubt about that. Views back towards the Opera House, the Harbour Bridge, established over in uh, 1916. And as you can see from these wonderful pictures, a very special place to go. minutes west of there this is where the action is at in Sydney Craig hits the target can her catch he needs to retrieve the situation down the break he had some roller coaster matches last year Marseille Save the match point against Imer before going on to win the title. He saved five against Kokonakis in Miami. Time! Leslo Giri saved a match point in Monte Carlo. Had one against Alcaraz, didn't beat him in Cincinnati. Saved one against Rublev on his way to winning the championship in Shanghai. He's lost a couple tonight. Can Zverev rock the belief of Team Poland? Thank you. Will the United Cup gentlemen. come down to the mixed yeah, doubles? Right. Thank you. Oh!
Thank you, everybody. Just trying to uh, calm everything down. trying to find the significant and the insignificant to try and calm the ship. Turmoil inside the mind of her catch. As a win that looked assured in the second set is slipping through his fingers. Some may well have set here in Sydney, but not, it appears, on Team Germany's challenge. The resurrection almost complete. Thank you. The silence will underscore the moment. These moments are what it's all about, Mark, though, isn't it? I mean, what a contest. Galador Sorella, whose fitness coach, will be uh, pretty thrilled with how Zverev has survived this. Two hours, 59 minutes, one stroke away again. A 
quite extraordinary evening here in Sydney. Zverev wins, and the United Cup will be decided on the mixed doubles. Two United Cup points came and went for Team Poland. Deep disappointment for her catch, respect for Zverev's effort. John Fitzgerald, that was a remarkable performance. Yeah, respect, absolutely. That takes a lot of character to come back there.